Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning <coughs> my uh, product development class today <coughs> which is this morning uh, I'll be delivering the lecture on uh, title identifying customer needs this is basically chapter 3 uh, inside your lesson plan and corresponding to chapter 5 in your textbook in your e-textbook right so <coughs> here we go <clears throat> in your textbook, uh, in this chapter, it is basically uh, showcasing a product device uh, which is uh, known as the thermostat, right? So thermostat is uh, basically a device uh, in which you will set your air conditioning or in a uh, four seasons country like uh, Japan and uh, <clears throat> United States, they have four seasons. Right, so they could set also like their uh, heater, right, uh, on, on top of their uh, air conditioning to certain temperature. So in Malaysia, basically a thermostat is a basically a device to uh, set or record, uh, fix the temperature that you need uh, in that uh, in that particular time. For example, you set at twenty four, so it is always keeping the temper uh, temperature of your room or your home or your hotel at twenty four all the time around until the temperature achieves 24 so the uh, temperature is always kept at that, that level so this is what uh, what we call a static uh, thermostat <coughs> it is just keeping a simple uh, single set temperature however in this uh, modern internet era of industrial revolution 4.0 definitely we need a uh, uh, smarter, uh, more flexible, or uh, more agile thermostat in the form of this uh, digital outlook of uh, thermostat in the, in, the, in the brand name of Nest. So Nest can be set temperature uh, flexibly, right? For example, setting from uh, say uh, from uh, eight o'clock until 11 o'clock at uh, perhaps uh, 25 degrees Celsius and later uh, at uh, 12 o'clock uh, perhaps the environment out there is getting hotter and hotter you could set a bit uh, a bit lower for example from 12 in the afternoon up to 3 p.m. you want to set it until 23 degrees Celsius and so on so it will capture uh, this kind of flexible setting so this is what the uh, what they call uh, the standard uh, static <coughs> thermostat and then we uh, are now discussing in this book chapter the smart thermostat or in other words in the book it is stated as a learning thermostat because that thermostat can learn your behavior of the temperature setting uh, your usage of the uh, setting uh, at the home and so on <clears throat> so let's learn more on this uh, learning thermostat as uh, being presented in your textbook So this is the case study of learning uh, thermostat by Nest Labs. Okay, <clears throat> this is the outlook and this is the inventor. So the inventor was uh, Tony Fadell. Uh, it was when Tony works at iPhone computer during the time when he, uh, during those time when I, uh, when uh, Apple computer developed uh, like, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, iPods and smartphone, those are the time uh, when the uh, this experience at uh, Apple computer uh, make uh, Tony become more proficient in uh, devising a uh, new uh, device. So when, when Tony resigned from uh, Apple computer, so he uh, set up a new company, uh, his own company in the names of uh, Nestlab. Nestlab was found to be very successful in the early days, uh, in the early years, uh, its uh, inception. Uh, by the time of the third year, uh, Nestlab's uh, uh, product has been bestseller in many parts of the world because it features the AI logic inside their thermostat, which is artificial intelligence uh, feature into the thermo uh, this learning thermostat. Okay, so end up after only uh, the third year of operation, Nestlab 
uh, was bought by uh, Google by the very expensive uh, purchase, which is 3.2 billion. So Tony has become a billionaire already. So why that Nest Lab uh, product is so successful? Of course, definitely it begins with a successful planning, a successful customer uh, identification of needs, right? So Tony has done thorough phase uh, fact based uh, specification. So Tony studied the product uh, thoroughly, studying the customer, studying the needs, including the wants, right? And later uh, make a tabulated uh, data out of the wants and the needs of the customer. And by only then he developed the real successful product that uh, he has managed to achieve. So though the cost is slightly expensive, around uh, 250 US dollar, so Malaysia price is about uh, 1,000 ringgit. So this product is considered one of successful product in recent years because that's why Google bought uh, this company. Okay, uh, the case study of uh, Tony uh, Fadel and Nestlab has been explained uh, in the uh, uh, case study. Uh, however, I would like to share with you the video clip how does uh, the actual Nest Lab function operates and how does it help a uh, customer to uh, manage uh, their home as far as setting of their heater, transformer, uh, sorry, heater and also uh, thermostat, uh, their air conditioning by using even their uh, smartphone. Let's have a look uh, on this uh, short video clip uh, meantime for better understanding of this uh, learning thermostat. So it's time to take a trip way back in time to what probably was the first connected device I ever hooked up in my house. And that would be that little thing right there, the Nest thermostat. This video is the second in a series that is sponsored by Lowe's. Yes, that Lowe's, the home improvement store, the one that you go to a million times in the first month of owning your own home. If you're just buying a house, get ready, it's gonna happen. Now, you know how this works, right? They're sponsoring the videos and that's great, love it. I get to say exactly what I want to say about all the things. So, let's do this. Here comes the Nest third generation thermostat. Okay, let's do some basics. Now, this thermostat is not cheap. Let's just get that out of the way. It's $249 out of the box. It's also ridiculously cool, or hot, I guess, depending on the season you're using it. That, that, that was a dad joke. Now Nest includes everything you need to install the thermostat right there in the box, and that includes a screwdriver, which is a really nice touch, I love that. Now you're probably asking yourself, Phil, can I actually install a thermostat myself? And my answer is yes, I did it, you can do it. But here's the thing, it's not like I had to figure it out all by myself, okay? The Nest app that you'll have to load up walks you through everything, and the Nest website has instructions for everything. They're gonna walk you through step by step, including taking a picture, your existing wiring diagram, and actually seeing if a nest is gonna work in your house in the first place. Just be sure to take your time and read all the instructions a few times and it'll be okay. Now, if you still think you need some help, there's a service called Nest Pro where Nest will find somebody to come help you install it. Or you can just call your favorite local air conditioning company. They know how to do this by now. So what's it like to use? Well, first let's make one thing clear. I live here in Florida where it's either really, really hot are really, really cold. It's been really weird. But that also means I don't have things like radiators or baseboard set up. So again, you're gonna need to go through Nest instructions on all that to see what works and what doesn't. So once you're up and running, you're gonna wanna do a few things. Uh, and the first one is to actually just use the Nest, okay? Turn the dial, put the temperature where you wanna be, and Nest will start learning your habits. It'll learn that maybe you like it a little cooler at night and you don't mind it being warmer during the day, or maybe you have to sleep with all the heat on. I don't know, it's totally up to you, right? But Nest is gonna start figuring out the way that you like it and start adjusting things on its own a little bit. Another cool thing is that it adjusts all this for the outside temperature, so it knows if it's gonna be super hot today or if it's gonna be really cold. But otherwise, I really just kinda let the Nest do its thing and I don't really fuss too much about where the exact temperature is. And here's why, uh, you know, you can kind of be super lazy with a Nest. Half the time I need to change the temperature on it, I don't even get up. 
I can use the app on my phone. I can change it from a web browser. I can change it from the little menu dock at the top of my computer. <laughs> I can change it with my voice via Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. And even though Nest isn't technically compatible with Apple's HomeKit and Siri, there are some third party things like if this then that that'll let you do it. All right, so a few more cool things about the Nest thermostat. First are these temperature sensors. Now they're $39 a piece and you can also get them from Lowe's and here's why you want one. So the Nest thermostat actually kind of works like an old dumb thermostat in that it takes the temperature right here on the wall. But what if you have a room that struggles to stay warm enough in the winter or cool enough in the summer? Well, that's the problem I have back there in my daughter's bedrooms. So I put a temperature sensor back there and that's what this Nest thermostat uses to actually adjust the temperature through the whole house. So that way those rooms aren't freezing in the winter or boiling in the summer. So number two, and this is probably my favorite thing, is that the Nest thermostat on the wall works in conjunction with the app on your phone or if your spouse has one as well. And it can tell when somebody's in the house or when everybody's gone. And that means when you leave, it'll just automatically shut off. You can still set a minimum and maximum temperature so you won't freeze the dog while you're gone. But it also means that he's not just gonna be running full blast because you forgot to turn it off when you left. And that home and away thing will actually work with other Nest products if you get them later. But even just for the thermostat, it's great. And that's the part that really starts to save you money in the long run. Now, by the way, this big screen, well, it's doing a thing that it calls Farsight. And the way it works is it lights up even when you're not right next to it tell you to see what the temperature is from across the room. I have mine set up to show the target temperature, so that's the temperature it's trying to hit. It can also just show a clock or it can show the weather. Really cool feature and I love being able to see it from across the room. And okay, here's the best part. It'll actually get better over time because Nest will update the software in the background. You don't have to do anything. That means you don't have to worry about manually installing new features or more important, security updates. So that's it in a nutshell for the third generation Nest thermostat. It's probably still my most used smart appliance here in my house, and especially in the summer here in Florida. You just have to do a little homework up front, okay? Go through the Nest website, make sure that you can actually use it in your house, and call for help if you need to. So that's it, again, this one's been sponsored by Lowe's. Thanks to them for doing that. I've got links to them for all this stuff that you can buy down below in the description. If you got any more questions on the Nest, hit me up in the comments, I'll be sure to answer them. And that's it, see you next time. Okay, uh, just now uh, you have seen how uh, does uh, that uh, thermostat, learning thermostat works, right? So it is uh, basically very flexible and very, I would say, uh, intuitive. And it will record uh, how uh, your, your preference of setting uh, at what temperature and uh, during certain time, for example. So it will uh, basically record and it will learn by itself uh, on your habit or preferences of temperature setting during certain time and certain day so that uh, it will uh, basically accumulate the data and it will uh, keep uh, as monitoring uh, part of your preferences. So this is the cool thing or uh, the uh, good features or smart features about this uh, learning thermostat, right? Okay, so let's have a look on the next slide. So we, we could say that this thermostat is successful invention type of device, right? So successful customer needs identification, how to identify the actual needs that customer uh, seek for uh, a device or the product that they want to buy. So basically, in identifying the successful uh, customer needs, so uh, product focus on the customer needs and if possible beyond or more than this customer need or it is like a wow factor or it is something additional uh, than is what expected uh, something which is positive right so we need to also identify the hidden needs or the explicit needs and the latent needs on top of uh, on top of the needs which is very clear and very uh, explicitly told by customer they need that kind of product, uh, they need uh, that kind of feature. Sometimes a product designer need to also identify the hidden needs, right? For example, in that Nest Lab, uh, one of the hidden needs uh, is that the device uh, could identify somehow in the home that 
there is no people inside so it will automatically shut down the air conditioning so that is basically hidden needs customer may not uh, actually need it in the in the first place but later they found it it is uh, cool to have that kind of features okay later needs later needs uh, <coughs> are basically the needs uh, that is uh, found later after the uh, use after the installation of the device right for example later needs of the that nest lab uh, perhaps that uh, you could uh, set the temperature uh, at many i would say ranges or at many uh, uh, at many uh, times so for example during the night time for example night time during summer or for for example night time during winter so those are kind of a later needs which is later found by customer who bought the device and installed at their home and later they found it is a kind of a need uh, which is uh, found somewhere after the operation of the product as a product designer also uh, we need to uh, specify uh, or create the specification of the product based on the facts or uh, number by interview or by recording uh, customer voice those are facts all right so we need to create the records of the needs activity during the development right during the design perhaps the needs is slightly different during the product uh, i would say development the needs uh, perhaps slightly uh, enhance or slightly become larger and perhaps uh, during the operation and perhaps during after one year's op operation the needs uh, perhaps basically evolve that's why NES has developed from uh, NES version 1 later upgraded into version 2 and the uh, uh, product which is showcased in the video clip just now is the NES version 3 so product evolve product develop and products uh, are being enhanced so we as a product designer basically uh, cannot miss the critical customer needs right so we must uh, evaluate sharply accurately so that the major uh, customer needs uh, are being uh, captured and embedded into the product so basically uh, these uh, are the successful features of uh, uh, step in identifying customer needs right so in the if we reflect a smartphone uh, in the year before uh, year 2000 we could see that uh, blackberry would be the i would say the best uh, selling uh, handphone or smartphone in those years they have the keyboard they have the a b c d in terms of hardware button so we think that these are one of the uh, best product served during the time but in uh, later in the new millennium uh, this kind of blackberry design in terms of hardware uh, button uh, uh, offering is considered obsolete so people want uh, a more latest need in the form of smartphone with a clean i would say uh, graphical user interface just the for the whole thing is screen uh, on top of uh, like uh, in comparison to this uh, hot, hot button like blackberry so nowadays all smartphones are basically soft touch on the smart screen so it is uh, considered uh, basically become the standard and must have uh, in to the smartphone uh, in the new millennium so in the olden days smartphone <coughs> is considered uh, basically just for a phone and conversation but in the new millennium we could say that smartphone must always come with camera so camera has become a standard feature video uh, camcorder has become the standard feature of the smartphone so later needs evolve from time to time based on customer expectation customer exploration <coughs> okay here is the diagram of the customer needs activity flow uh, from the earlier chapter that we discussed on identifying customer needs right from the mission statement and later uh, we are moving towards uh, establishing a target specification and later uh, we generate the, uh, the product concept 
select the product and up to the actual development. So meantime, from the identifying the customer needs from this uh, first step, we perform some economic analysis, uh, for example, like break-even uh, analysis, product costing, and we do some benchmark uh, of uh, this product with some other existing product in the market. And we also build the uh, prototype so that we could gauge what is the response uh, from the customer. So here is the next uh, <coughs> learning thermostat in which uh, it, it is a very graphical uh, based display, very nice, nice color and it has uh, many features, uh, feature for display status, current temperature, target temperature and the symbol of the product. So this uh, is basically the flow that we are discussing uh, starting from the mission statement up to development plan. And in this chapter, we are basically here identifying customer needs, the very among first step in our development uh, progress uh, for designing a new product. Okay, what are the processes uh, in identifying uh, customer needs? Uh, in order to design a successful uh, product, so basically there are steps and processes that a uh, product designer must follow. So, right, among the suggested uh, customer needs uh, product uh, and process identification is basically first, we need to gather raw data from customer. So, because customer are the targeted user in which later we uh, we are promoting them to buy, so we must uh, gather the data from customer. After gathering the data, so we need to interpret the raw data in terms of its real meaning. For example, customer say that I want a product which is easy to set. So how how to transfer that statement? Uh, easy to set into actual uh, product feature that we could offer to customer. So the, the, the third process of identifying customer need is uh, to organize the needs or to organize the input after you interview or after you uh, talk to customer or after you make a survey. Uh, those needs need to be rank or need to be arranged in terms of its hierarchy from the uh, most important to the less important. For example, hierarchy from the primary importance, secondary importance, and also the tertiary needs. And then after organizing them in terms of ranking and hierarchy, so we need to establish the relative importance or the weightage. Uh, those needs need to be weighed in terms of its importance. For example, into a five star needs or three star needs or uh, one star need. So from that importance, uh, the product designer could uh, prioritize uh, which feature that they must uh, embed importantly into the product first, right, and second, and later, and so on. So after contemplating all those uh, relative importance of the needs, then they can reflect and uh, reassess uh, the, assess, uh, the evaluation and improve the product further. Okay, this is uh, one example uh, in the earlier step of the product development in which we must come up with the uh, mission statement, right? This is the next lab uh, learning uh, thermostat mission statement. For example, one, the product description is that the thermostat uh, must uh, be targeted uh, to be used uh, for re uh, residential use or it is a home basically homeowner use, uh, like a house, apartment, and so on. Okay, what are the benefit proposition of this Nest Lab thermo, uh, learning uh, thermostat? It must be simple. Uh, it must look attractive, I would say, excellent design, and it must be able to save energy for the user, right? In the long run, it should be able to save energy after Nest Lab monitor or capture or learn your preferences uh, out of certain days, out of certain season, so it can reiterate the setting and it keeps uh, as uh, their pref uh, as the customer preference and keep repeating uh, the same setting or the preference uh, over time. What are the uh, key business goals? Well, basically, say the product uh, will uh, 
be introduced to the market in uh, 2012, fourth quarter, maybe somewhere October, November, December 2012. The uh, gross margin uh, is uh, 50%, so it must uh, make a good profit, right? 10% share of replacement thermostat market by 2016. So they targeted within the next four years, 10% uh, uh, of uh, traditional or static thermostat uh, got to be replaced by, by this learning thermostat, all right, by the year 2016. What are your targeted primary market for this uh, new product? Like for the case for Nest Lab, uh, their primary target market is a uh, home owner, right? Re uh, residential customer. Okay, secondary market. So it is also targeting uh, for the uh, heating, ventilation, and a conditioning contractor that uh, doing the residential work. So the first is the single independent uh, home owner, for example, those that purchase home, right? And the rest. Uh, secondary market that target for the contractor who are installing uh, heating, ventilation, and aircon uh, equipment or uh, machine uh, at home, right? Or the contractors. What uh, What are your assumption for this uh, new product? For example, uh, the assumption for Nest Lab uh, learning thermostat is basically uh, to replace the existing uh, conventional static thermostat, and it should be. It must be compatible with, of course, the existing wiring or electrical system of the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning in many homes. So who are your uh, stakeholders? Basically, your stakeholders are homeowner, a retailer, so outlet that sell uh, air conditioning equipment, service center, okay, uh, the production uh, department, and also legal department. So these are the basic uh, Nest Lab mission statement. So first, uh, the f among the first step that we need to do in order to develop a successful product like Nest Lab, we uh, must engage, uh, gather raw data from customer. So there are there are few approaches uh, in gathering data. First, you could engage interview. So you could interview a homeowner of a house. Right, that use uh, air conditioning, and you may discuss uh, with the homeowner about the performance of the current uh, conventional thermostat. Right, and you uh, may ask their input. How do you wish if a new uh, innovative learning thermostat that can be developed? What could you wish for that kind of uh, device? So second uh, approach is the focus group. Instead of interviewing the homeowner, you could also approach the uh, basically uh, uh, focus group uh, out of like 8 to 12 customers. For example, focus group uh, could be, uh, for example, like the uh, contractors, right? Or the outlet that sell many uh, equipment and device uh, to, for example, homeowner. Right, in which you could also execute market research uh, for the professional environment, like contractors that install thermostat, aircon, and heater in the corporate offices, for example. And the third approach to gather raw data from customer, basically, you could uh, be on the site or at the home or at the uh, construction site, uh, observing how the product is being installed and how. Uh, for example, the uh, smart or learning thermostat is being used at home. So you could observe. This is what, they call, what we call site observation, right? So there are basically three approaches. And in comparison to the uh, single individual interview, in comparison to focus group, uh, this is like a single homeowner. This uh, could be like a group of uh, contractors. Or the builders of the home so this is the graph of effectiveness in terms of number of interviews uh, of the single uh, of the single person or uh, if uh, even uh, if in comparison to if you uh, engage interview uh, within a within a group so <clears throat> basically the graph shows that 
if you interview single individual owner in comparison to a focus group, for example, like the contractor or the uh, outlet shops that sell uh, many, uh, I would say, home appliance needs. So you could see that by interviewing, for example, two individual, right? Uh, individual, individual at a person level, you could ident then identify around about 55% of the uh, customer needs. But if you uh, make two interview out of uh, two groups, you could identify as much as like 65% of the uh, customer needs. In comparison, if you interview eight person, right, you could uh, extract perhaps around 85% of the customer need. However, if you interview uh, eight times for the eight group, perhaps you can identify up to 90% of the needs from customer. Of course, a group interview is much more effective in comparison to the individual interview. Okay, how to select uh, the customer uh, to make the interview? For example, uh, if it is a user, right, this is individual user, the homeowner, and this is a lead user, or if you could, for example, uh, interview uh, heating, vacuum, and air conditioning contractor, it is a, a lead user 5, normal user 5, and retailer 5. These are the suggested selection metric in order for you to get a, a raw uh, data uh, regarding customer needs. This is individual uh, users, and this is uh, lead users. So who to interview, basically? So in order to develop a successful product, you need to interview the, uh, for example, uh, individual user like homeowner and family member, right? Uh, for the lead, uh, lead group, basically those within the group that is championing the installation of air conditioning or heater, then you may approach uh, contractor, uh, electrical uh, showroom outlet, home designer, uh, or the DIY outlet. So these are potential people or individual uh, who could, uh, who you could approach for interviewing to gather the raw data about customer needs. Step two, okay. The question is, what uh, what do you need to do with the data or the input, the recordings or the uh, the transcript that you make after you uh, interview your customer? Step two is we need to interpret that raw data in terms of actual customer needs. So you have to translate it into a actual customer needs. Okay, so what you need to focus on is actually you need to express out what uh, the product has to do, right? What the product must do, okay? And then uh, it must be expressed in the specific raw data. I mean, very exact so that that particular product uh, must do. And you could uh, better use the positive uh, phrasing, right? So you look at the constructive part of the customer input and then you express the needs as a feature uh, to the product. So the needs that customer told you, you need to transform, translate it into the uh, specification into the product. Okay, so that is uh, step two. This is an uh, example of a customer statement. Uh, for example, you have done the interview. So some of the customer may give you this kind of input, right? For example, uh, the, this is a interview customer named Bill Esposito, right? Uh, uh, who are interviewing them, uh, John and Lisa. Uh, it is uh, done at Cambridge, Massachusetts, right? and uh, they currently use a Honeywell model, right? So A45, perhaps the most typical thermostat uh, at home, at American home. So when when you ask que a question, so they will uh, give a statement like customer statement. I have to manually turn it on and off when it gets uh, too hot or cold. So this is basically a typical setting of a uh, conventional uh, thermostat in which uh, you have to con control it manually. 
so people want to make it easy so that you don't have to uh, turn off and on manually so if it is uh, too cold already so the thermostat will shut down the compressor right when it is uh, heating up again so uh, you need to switch it back uh, to cool it down again so the interpreted needs is that the thermostat maintains a comfortable temperature without requiring user action so this is where the learning thermostat comes in in which it learns the customer preferences perhaps 23 is the most preferred temperature setting for that particular day in uh, afternoon so it will always maintain in that particular time the temperature is set at 23 degrees celsius that for example okay the question uh, or you prompt the customer to say something like a like current model i like that i can change the temperature if the the setting is too high so you have to interpret what is the real meaning of that saying uh, it may be interpreted uh, this way the temperature setting is easy to control manually right so if customers say it didn't cost a fortune so for um, uh, the thermostat it means uh, in the market the thermostat must be uh, affordable or must be relatively uh, cheap to buy to purchase and to install and so on right you could have so many interpretation uh, of the uh, statement from customer for example like this, this is a ne neg negative input i'm too lazy uh, to learn how to figure it out so you you rephrase the uh, uh, statement into a positive uh, interpreted needs in the form of the customer that requires a little or no user instruction means it is easy to set it is easy to use and it is easy to be installed for example so these are the sample of customer statements that uh, one of uh, or two of our interviewers have done at the market in uh, Massachusetts. Okay, this is a uh, step two, and uh, guidelines for needs statement like uh, step two guideline uh, what to ask for example what or how uh, being specific. Right. Uh, always use positive uh, statement instead of negative. Right. Uh, convert the statement into the attribute attribu uh, attribute of the product, or it becomes the specification of the product. So uh, try to avoid must and should. Right. For example, uh, <clears throat> I would like my iPhone. Right. I would like my iPhone to adjust my thermostat. So the need the need statement in the right perspective is. The thermostat can be controlled remotely without requiring a special device. So this is what the real need statement meant by customer. So it is not that the thermostat is accompanied by a downloadable uh, downloadable iPhone apps. So it must be uh, without requiring a special device, right? So positive, not negative. I'm getting tired of standing in front of my thermostat uh, to program it. Of course. It is inconvenient for a customer to always stand at the front of thermostat to do the setting or programming. So the real, uh, the right meaning of the need statement is basically the thermostat can be programmed from a comfortable position, from, from, from a distance. For example, from the seating of their sofa, so the thermostat could be remotely programmed, right? So these uh, are part of the interpretation when you, after you interview your customer, talk to customer, record their statement. So you go back to your office, you start interpreting what does customer really want from a, a good, uh, successful uh, product design. Okay, after you uh, gather and uh, interpret, so you need to uh, order or you need to rank uh, or organize the needs into a hierarchy. Hierarchy means that uh, which one is the most important, which one is the second important, which is the lesser important. So you have to rank it out into a certain scheme, for example, into a number of star, right? Okay, uh, when you talk to customer, you have so many inputs, right? Later, you categorize into a category like the thermostat is easy to install. All right, this is the category easy to install or user friendly. The thermostat has a uh, last long time, of course, uh, in terms of product usage, it could last for 
five years, six years, ten years, and so on. So the thermostat must be easy to use. So that is another expectation from a customer. It is not complicated, straightforward, and it must be uh, very customer friendly. Okay. Another cluster of input after your interview, the th uh, thermostat uh, control uh, accurately, right? If you set at 25 degrees Celsius, so it gives the reading of exact 25 degrees Celsius. The th thermostat is smart, right? The th thermostat must be personal. It must be uh, reflecting the personal preference of, of the home user. The thermostat is a good investment. So if you invest... Uh, RM1000, it must be worth of the investment over a long run, for example, in the form of saving energy. It is rated at 3 star. For example, the, thermo uh, the thermostat is easy to install. It means that the thermostat works with any existing heating or cooling system. So it must be able to be uh, flexible with many type of system. So easy to match, easy to install, easy for operation. So these are the uh, primary and secondary customer needs in which you need to rank uh, the uh, raw data after you uh, done your survey. Okay, so step four, we have to establish the relative importance of the needs. Uh, relative important, it means is that the uh, input must be gauged in the form of a survey. For example, you have found that many uh, features or import, uh, importance or needs from customer, right? So you have to rank it uh, into, for example, this kind of uh, survey, right? So the thermostat does not require user to set time or date, okay? So it means that the thermostat could learn and set the temperature per your preference over the time. The thermostat does not require replacing batteries uh, because it is directly using alternating current AC uh, from uh, your electrical uh, wiring supply. The thermostat adjusts automatically to the season. So, so all these uh, one, two, three, four uh, statement basically you are deriving from the customer needs so that. You could engage the importance uh, assessment in the form of survey to the uh, to the customer in terms of one feature is under undesirable, two features is not important, three features would be nice to have, four features is highly desir desirable, five features uh, is critical which is very important. So you ask back customer. Uh, perhaps the customer from different uh, location, right? So to rank it uh, from the feature is undesirable, which is one, uh, to the feature which is critical out of this uh, four statement, right? So that is uh, after the verbal interview, you have uh, this uh, kind of statement. Later, you run another uh, survey uh, kind of questionnaire ask them to rank it from 1 to 5 out of those uh, feature that you have done the interviews. Okay, last but not least, these are the uh, last step of your identifying customer needs, which is a reflection on the result and the process. So, during the interaction uh, with customers, uh, basically, you have gathered many uh, expectations, uh, which is considered uh, important like uh, one star, two star or three star and then uh, you need to weigh in terms of it's important you run the last survey uh, to rank between one to five which one is desirable which is which one is undesirable so by that uh, you need to uh, get the uh, needs and expect uh, expect expectation more than what is customer expecting right and further follow-up interviews and survey perhaps after six months or, or one year. So that is the uh, one of the approach uh, to have a good participant for ongoing development for your newly uh, invented products, right? Such as this Nest Lab uh, Smart uh, Temperature uh, Thermostat, right? I would say <coughs> uh, Tony Fadell uh, absolutely uh, has done this kind of step 
uh, getting feedback uh, from the home user uh, customers uh, so that if the new company could offer a better thermostat, are they willing to buy? Uh, if they could offer a smarter, more flexible uh, uh, learning thermostat, are they willing to uh, install it at their home? So these are the successful five steps for a new product uh, that could be developed successfully and must uh, produce and become a bestseller. Okay, by that, that will cover my uh, chapter 3, identifying customer needs. Those are the five steps needed to successfully develop a new product, particularly uh, for uh, developing for your uh, group project. So, so I would uh, uh, stop here for my uh, lecture on uh, chapter 3. So I will uh, also expect you to uh, uh, read your textbook, uh, the e-textbook that uh, I have uploaded at Edmodo. And uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. And I hope you have been benefited from listening to my lecture this morning. Thank you and see you next week.